Okay, we'll try that again. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not the only cheerful person here at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Um, welcome to you all here. Um, it's lovely to have Harrison and Violet. Nick, say it, they don't count. You two are the important ones, aren't you? Harrison's chosen half the songs for this morning. And he's going to come and do the actions. Um, so he'll expect you all to join in with actions. You can't have Harrison and me doing it solo. So we do need actions. Um, it's great to have you all here. In a few minutes, we'll get started with our service. Just to say, we are now live broadcasting. Um, it can only see the back of your head, unless you're stood here looking the other way. Um, but if you particularly don't want the back of your head to be seen, we suggest you move out to the side aisles. This is a reason why you don't want to be visible on screen. We're going out to YouTube live, which means any friends and relatives who haven't been able to get here, you can tell them to go to Enfold at St. Peter's Belpa and they can see this morning's service. It'll be there for people to look at. It's all a bit new to us, so Toby's at the back making sure all the buttons press right. We managed to record a funeral with completely silent music earlier on in the week, but hey, we're getting there. The people get back and said, you press this button. Maybe I either hadn't listened or didn't know. And so various bits and pieces. Um, things I need to share with you. Uh, Jane Harlow, who's not with us this morning, is doing a sponsored walk for the Maasai Trust. Um, please do sign up if you can for that. Um, the parish weekend is on the 18th of September, or that weekend. Um, so on Wednesday, we are praying here, Wednesday the 7th at 7. Whether you're going or not, it will be great to have people praying for those who are going, those who are not, for the team that we're leaving behind to take a service for the first time, which is Helen and Patience and Linda from St. Mark's. It's one joint service. They're all in training with the diocese, so we're letting them loose as we're all doing other things. So please do pray for them as well when we pray together. Um, there, is, there has been a couple of cancellations for the parish weekend, so if you would like to come, please speak to Roy very quickly, the end going to disappear quickly at the end, but there are spaces for people um, if you'd like to come and join us for that. What else is on my list? Oh, it's a bring and share lunch next Sunday. I wouldn't be for this. Um, Kevin Hoy from Smiles, who work, who are a link charity with us and work in, largely in Romania. We'll be here next week, and if you want to hear a bit more from him, do come to a bring and share lunch afterwards. Again, there's a sign-up sheet, just to give us a bit of an idea. Tracy, are you trying to advertise the Bohemians for next Saturday? <laughs> the Bohemians are on here next Saturday. There are still a very few tickets left. We are almost sold out. So if you'd like to, they were brilliant last time they were here, and do come along and join us for that. Um, harvest is coming up, 25th of September will be Harvest Sunday. Our gifts are things that are appropriate to the food bank, so try not to bring huge, great tins of beans, but lots of small ones go out through the food bank, as well as personal items, but they never get enough toothpaste, toothbrushes, all those sort of, and other personal items, so that would be great. Um, oops, I've got a slide on here, it's not on there. <laughs> So we'll be talking today, though, about the choices that we make, the choice to have a violent baptism, the choices that we all make day by day and how they affect us. So everything will be on the screen. If it's in yellow, um, I'm saying it. If it's in white, we're all saying it. And if I can remember the colour, I think it's orange, uh, which will be godparents when we get there. We have come from different places, we're on different journeys, but we all have all chosen to be here today. So let us sing with one voice, pray with one heart, and worship together. Amen. And before we sing the song, I've got to do the bands. Oh, dear me. I published the bands of marriage between Edmund John no, between James Alexander Gill and Bethany Clare Paget, both at the parish of Weddington and Caldicott, but getting married in this parish by virtue of a connection. This is for the first time of asking. If anybody knows any reason in law why these two persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. 
And now we're going to sing the first of two songs together. Which the first one is Come, Now is the Time to Worship. So let's stand together and sing. Harrison, you're going to come and help me do the actions. Our God is a great big God. Does anybody else want to come and join Harrison and me doing the actions? Okay. I'm used to this. Come on then, come and join me up here and we'll do the actions together. And we'll see how well your teachers taught you the actions. Really well. Really well. Really, really well. <laughs>
also saying today, which Nick and Sarah know about, because there's a book being published of the history of St. Peter's, which is going to come out for our 200th anniversary in a couple of months' time, not that far away. Um, so there may be some shots of you going into posterity, <laughs> doing actions. I can see Andy taking pictures at the back, and I'm rather worried the history of the church in the next 200 years is going to be me. Anyway, God loves us however we are. For all the blessings of every day, the blessings that you send our way. For trees and plants, for mountains high, for all that lives below sea and sky. For homes and food, for life and health, your concern for our poverty, the challenge of wealth. For our bodies, faces, hands and feet, for families to love and friends to meet. For every gift of life and love given to us from God above, we thank you, God. Amen. Do be seated. Um, I said we'd be talking about choices today, so I'm going to get some voting going here. You can't sit silently for this. Now, if I'm giving you some TV, I know we can watch multiple things at different times, so these things don't quite work as well as they used to. But some of these things, if it's Friday night and you're having a takeaway, are you a pizza or a fish and chips person? Let's have votes for pizzas. Fish and chips? Oh, I think fish and chips shops will do well. Let's hope so as uh, they're struggling with it. Okay, our next choice. <laughs> I think I can probably guess the answer to this one. Are you a Derby fan or a Forest fan? <laughs> Dare I even ask that in here? Have we got anybody who dares say they're a Forest fan? Hey, brave person. Uh, do we have any <coughs> Derby fans in here? Oh, this lot not committing themselves down here. Okay. Are you EastEnders or Coronation Street? <laughs> do we have anybody who watches them? You know, they tell you these are the most watched programmes. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, I've got my next one. Better than that one. Okay, this is, this is more for the small person's level. This is just to prove I'm a grandparent who's into these things. Are you a Bluey fan or a Hey Dougie fan? Oh, that's interesting. There's a new series of Bluey out. I just thought I'd tell you because I've been forced to watch it with my grandchildren. Um, very educational, both of these. So, are you a Bluey fan? Are you a Hey Dougie fan? Oh, it's really, those are admitting which they watch. Well, I hope you've got your little badges from Hey Dougie. That's my last one. Okay. Strictly or Formula One? <laughs> no, I, sus I have a feeling there might be a genderist divide here, but I could be very wrong. Who's a Strictly fan? And... Um, Who'd rather watch Formula One? I thought there might well be a fairly, fairly solid. Not entirely, because we all have our differences. But these are all the different choices that we make every day. You think, oh, I don't make many choices. But you all made a choice as to what you were going to put on when you came here. You assess what you thought you were coming to and what you thought you should put on. So even before you got out of bed this morning, you were making choices so our life is filled with choices. But sometimes we make choices without really knowing what the consequences might be ahead of us. Oops. Come on. It's not good. Ah. The consequence of this is that my video doesn't want to play. Hi, my name's Michael Rosen and I help... Have we got any sound? Hi, my name's Michael Rosen and I help make a book called We're Going on a Bear Hunt and it goes something like this. We're going on a bear hunt, we're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh-oh, grass. Long wavy grass. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no, we got to go through it. 
swishy, swashy, swishy, swashy, swishy, swashy. Choo 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 choo. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day! We're not scared. Uh oh, a river, a deep cold river. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no! We got to go through it. Dive in. Splash, 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 splash. Choo 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 choo. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day. We're not scared. Uh oh. Mud, thick, oozy mud. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no! We got to go through it. <coughs> Squelch, squirch. <coughs> Squelch, squirch. Choo 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 choo. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day! We're not scared. Uh oh, a forest, a big dark forest. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no! We got to go through it. Stumble, trip, stumble, trip, stumble, trip. Choo 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 choo. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day! We're not scared. Uh oh! A snowstorm. A swirling, whirling snowstorm. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no! We got to go through it. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day! We're not scared. Uh oh, a cave, a narrow, gloomy cave. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. Oh no! We got to go through it. Tip, toe, tip, toe, tip, toe. What's that? One shiny wet nose. Two big furry ears. Two big goggly eyes. It's a bear. Quick, back to the cave. Tiptoe, 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 back through the snowstorm. Back through the forest. Stumble, trip, stumble, trip, stumble, trip. Back through the mud. Squelch, squelch. Back through the river. Dive in. Splash, 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 splash. Back through the grass. Swishy, swashy, swishy, swashy, swishy, swashy. Down the road, up to our front door. Open the door at the stairs. Dup, 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 dup. Oh no! We forgot to shut the door. Back downstairs. Dup, 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 dup. Shut that door. Boom! Back up the stairs. Dup, 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 dup. Along the passage, into the bedroom, into bed, under the covers. We're not going on a bear hunt again. <laughs> We're going on a. Choices. You don't always know what's going to happen depending on the choice that you make. Getting the choice now, we're going to invite the kids if they'd like you to go out and do some activities for a little while whilst uh, we do some more talky stuff. I think there's lots of people out there ready to do fun things with you and if you want to go you're very welcome. Or if you think you don't want to go and want to go in a couple of minutes you're also very welcome. We're now going to uh, as the children leave us, uh, we're going to have a time of confession where we remember some of the choices we make are not good ones. 
Lord, we want to come to you with childlike confidence and to imitate your love for us and for others. But we often obey our own selfish wants and wishes instead. We are sorry, Lord. Help us to follow you. We wish all our words were true and sincere, but we're surprised and disappointed at the words that come out of our mouths. We are sorry, Lord. Help us to follow you. We want to treat our friends well, but too often we mistreat those we love most by what we say and do. We are sorry, Lord. Help us to follow you. We like to think that we always do what we promise, no matter how much it costs us. But we know how often we break our promises. We are sorry, Lord. Help us to follow you. In our heads we honour you, but often we act like we have more respect for whoever or whatever is popular at the moment. We are sorry, Lord. Help us to follow you. Forgive us and remake us into the people you created us to be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God takes us into his arms and blesses us. God loves us and protects us. When we come to God in a true spirit of repentance, <clears throat> from the littlest sorry of the youngest child to the biggest father forgive of those old enough to know better, God hears us and welcomes us with open and loving arms. We are blessed. Amen. We call it that's a special prayer for today. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness. Increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now every day there is a psalm set for the day, and today it happens to be Psalm 139, which is a beautiful psalm about our growth before we're even born. So I thought we'd include that today in a responsive form. So again, I'll do the yellow if you do the white. Lord, you have tested me. You know when I sit down and when I get up. You know where I go and where I lie down. You, Lord, you know what I want to say. You're all around me on every side. Your knowledge of me is too deep. Even the darkness is not dark to you. You created every part of me. I praise you because you made me in such a wonderful way. You could see my bones grow as my body took shape. Your thoughts are beyond my understanding. If I could count them, there would be more than all the grains of the sand. So, Violet, even before you began, God knew what was going on. And so we're going to have our Bible reading from Luke 14. I looked at it and I thought this is a really challenging passage so I was and then I realized it was a baptism service and I thought I wonder whether she wants the most challenging version now, I don't know if you know but talking of choice there are so many different Bible translations this morning I was up quite early this morning looking through them and like as usual I was crippled by choice um, but I chose one of the softer ones some of them use the word hate somewhere. I've chosen a softer one, and it is the, it's, it's Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 14, verses 25 to 33, and I've chosen it from something called the Easy English Bible, so it hasn't got any religious language. Jesus did um, make a point of upsetting the religious people of the days, and I'm sure this would have done so. So Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 to 33. 
Crowds of many people were travelling with Jesus on his journey. So he turned and said to them, If someone wants to obey me, he must live like this. He must love me more than he loves his own father and mother. He must love me more than he loves his wife and his children. He must love me more than he loves his brothers and sisters. He must even love me more than he loves himself. If he does not do that, he cannot be one of my disciples. He must live like a person that carries his own cross to go and die. If he's not ready to die for me, he cannot be one of my disciples. Here is an example. Perhaps one of you wants to build a tall building. Before you start to build, you will sit down. You will decide how much it will cost. Then you need to know if you have enough money to finish the work. If you do not do this, you may not have enough money. You may put the first stones in the ground, but then you cannot finish the building. If you have to stop, other people will laugh at you. They will say to each other, this man is a fool. He started to build, but he couldn't finish the work. Then Jesus gave them another example. Perhaps a king wants to fight a war against another king. But before he goes to fight, he sits down. He thinks to himself, can I win this war? My army is large with 10,000 men. But the other king has twice as many soldiers in his army. No, I cannot do it. I know I cannot beat the other king. So while the stronger king is far away, he will send a man to him with a message. He will tell the other king that he does not want to fight. He will ask him what he can do so that they can come, become friends together. Jesus then said, It is like that for all of you. If you want to be my disciples, you must leave everything you have behind you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. difficult and challenging passage for today but it is all about making choices. I wonder if we had known Covid was coming would any of us have behaved any differently? I don't know what you think. Would we have done things differently? Would we have put face masks on sooner or later? we have obeyed the instructions if we'd known what was coming before we were locked down. But if you knew what was going to happen over the next day, the next week, the next year, what choices might you make? We've got a very good friend of ours who's just been told our husband's got six weeks probably for lucky left to live. And they are busy making a lot of choices. And I know your family had to go through making a lot of choices. What do we do? What's really important to us? If I know this, what choices do I make? And what sort of guidance do any of us want before we make choices? Often people say, I haven't got enough information. But we don't do the bear hunt. They didn't have any information. Sometimes we have to make choices with very little to actually guide us. A bit of a giveaway here, one of those six bits of programme of which one I probably want. Let me show you some bit pro. So what we've got is a chocolate molten cake with a beautiful peanut butter filling which oozes out when you cut it. These are designed to be hot straight from the oven. Right, bacon number two. For your technical challenge, Paul would like you to make six molten chocolate puddings. I've got to, you know, really think about when they go in the oven because they have to be, you know, so runny in the middle. Essentially, they could sort of carry on cooking. So, oh, it's a minefield. Well, at least I'm not on my own right now, which makes it a bit better. Does it? Does it actually make no. it better? No, it doesn't. I've never made them before. I know what they look like. Dun, 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 dun. I have absolutely no idea. I made this before, similar, not peanut butter. It's okay, got it. I've never made a chocolate pudding in my life. 
So, boom. I've weighed them out. Dead on 100 grams in each pot. Got probably about 10 minutes in the freezer just to chill them down. Then it is item six, bake. Baking time, that's what it's all about to I have no idea. How long? The undisclosed bake time for Paul's recipe is 10 minutes. Like 20, 15 minutes? No idea. No idea. I'm going to say it's probably about 35 minutes. Um, obviously, I don't want them to be raw. Are you getting it now? Can... Bake off, you'll know all about the technical challenge where they get bits missing from the information. But what did they base their timing decisions upon? Some of them had had some experience before. They put something similar, so they based it on their experience. Others were watching other people. There's one of those, if you watch the whole programme, she kept changing it because she watched how long other people were cooking for and kept worrying. And they were testing out the theories that they had. Again, one of them kept taking them out of the oven and they felt as flat as something chewy and interesting at the end. But they had to make their decisions based on that. They had nothing else to go on. The same with our choice to follow God. That choice matters. It matters, the choice we make, because it changes the whole way that any of us live or interact with other people. Sometimes, if we make the choice to follow God, we will be bucking the trend. Because one of the big things in a Christian journey is about forgiveness. Forgiveness of people who hurt us. Forgiveness often of ourselves when we do things wrong. Knowing that God forgives whatever. And that's not always easy and it's often not the popular choice. He deserved what he got. You can't forgive him. So and so is completely unforgivable. These are phrases we hear all the time. But our Christian journey is about learning to forgive. And sometimes when we're on that Christian journey, people will laugh at us. And you don't go to church, do you? Not an unusual comment. It's boring. It's irrelevant. It's untrue. And it's full of hypocrites. You'll have heard those. Well, I hope when you come here at Easter St. Peter's, it's not boring. And I hope it certainly isn't irrelevant because we try to make sure that you go out saying, actually, this can change how I interact with people tomorrow. I don't believe it's untrue because I've lived my life based on what I know about Jesus and it's changed everything. But I do have to admit that sometimes church can have a number of hypocrites in it and you are welcome to come and join us. What we say and what we do do not always match up. Thank goodness God forgives us. But what do we base those decisions that we make to follow Jesus on? Well, pretty like, much like them in Bake Off. Our experience of what goes on around us in the world. Watching how other people behave, those people who say they follow Jesus, what is it they've got that makes them any different from me? And testing it out. God is happy for us to test and to try and to ask questions. There is no question that's too difficult for God or his family to help us deal with. And we demonstrate that intention to follow Jesus through that act of baptism. This morning it's Violet who's little. Sometimes they're even littler than Violet. It's a shame Jane's not here with us, which is our last full immersion baptism. As adults, 
You can make that choice and be baptised into the family of Jesus with a little bit of water, but it's great fun if we put you right under that symbol that Jesus had of water in baptism. So what is this choice of baptism all about? Baptism is not just a naming ceremony. It's not just something that you do because the family says so. It's not just a way of keeping your child safe and well in the future. And it's not just an opportunity for a party. It's a jolly good opportunity for all those things. But there's much more to what we're doing this morning with Violet than those. Because baptism is, it's a choice. And it's asking God to be an active part of you or a child's life forever. It's starting out on a journey of discovery that will last for a lifetime. None of us have got all the answers. I'm looking at some of the retired clergy around here who are, who've been at it much longer than I have, and they would agree that they're still on their journeys of discovery of more and more and more about God. It's like I am convinced God hides verses in the Bible. They're laughing, so you know just what I mean. You've read a passage a hundred times, you read it again, you say, I'm sure it wasn't there last time. And usually it's because I'm in a different position and need to learn something new from God. Baptism is about knowing that whatever you do in your life, God will love you and forgive you. There is nothing that any of us can do that for God is unforgivable. Sometimes people come to me and say, yes, but you don't know about what happened in my life. God does, and he's already forgiven it. You just have to accept it. And being baptised makes you part of the family of those who believe. And we're a pretty mixed up lot. But most families are a pretty mixed up lot. And the family of God is even more mixed up. And it's beautiful. And it's full of people who love and care for each other. One of our sons, when they moved down to Exeter, said, I don't know why people don't go to church just to meet people who will care about them. So if you're moving somewhere new, take my son's advice. Find a church that looks like it's bubbling and full of people and they'll love and care for you and you might discover more of your journey with Jesus. Because Jesus says that the choice to follow him means we have to give up everything. Now that sounds really hard. But Jesus says in return for giving up the I want, I want, I won't forgive, I won't love, in return for giving all those things up, Jesus says, we will gain more than we could ever in our wildest dreams imagine. I've been banging on about forgiveness this morning. But so often, many of us need deep forgiveness. Joy. It's not all deep, serious stuff. We have a jolly good time, and I know Andy will have taken that photo of me doing it. Because we enjoy being on that journey with Jesus. People say, aren't Christians all terribly serious? Well, one of the things we do on baptism prep is the first miracle that Jesus ever, ever did was 70 gallons of best wine. Yeah. That cannot have been a very serious party he was at by the end. And that was after they'd drunk the place dry. So... I think there was a lot of fun at that party. But Jesus also says we get life in all its fullness and we get it now. We don't have to wait till we die. That he offers us all those things here and now. He said he gives us this new family to love and care for us. 
And those of you who are part of the family of the church will know there's people who love and care and support. When I was away on sabbatical, it was great to have the little messages from people just responding to my Facebook page or just dropping a line saying, just because you've been away for three months, we haven't forgotten you. And it was great to have that sense of being part of the family. And on all of that, we get the certainty that when it's all over, that is just the beginning of a new life. We don't know what that life will be like, but Jesus is absolutely certain in his teaching that the full stop is just temporary and that we will have life in even greater fullness with him, more than we can ever imagine. So that's the choices that Jesus puts before us this morning. And it's up to each of us as individuals to make that choice. No one can make it for us. So as we prepare for the baptism, we're going to sing a hymn, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart, which expresses those thoughts of our journey with God. So let's stand. That would be great. And I'm going to invite parents and godparents to join me up on the platform.
she wants to go and play now. <laughs> Colin and Sarah, come and join me up here. Bring Harrison and Violet. Responses will be on the screen. What? It's not your turn, but you can stand here. That's all right. That's fine. Right. Our Lord Jesus Christ has told us that to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of water and the Spirit, and has given us baptism as the sign and seal of this new birth. Here we are washed by the Holy Spirit and made clean. Here we are closed with Christ, dying to sin, that we may live his risen life. As children of God, we have a new dignity, and God calls us to fullness of life. Jesus said, let the children come to me, do not stop them. We thank God for Violet, who's come to be baptised today. Christ loves her and welcomes her into his church. So I ask you all... Will you support Violet as she begins her journey of faith? We will. Will you help her to live and grow within God's family? We will. God knows each of us by name and we are his. Parents and godparents, you speak for Violet today. Will you pray for her and help her to follow Christ? We all wander far from God and lose our way. Christ comes to find us and welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call. Therefore, I ask you as parents and godparents, do you turn away from sin? Do you reject evil? Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do you trust him as Lord? Now we do baptisms here in the middle of the church. The water itself isn't magic, but it's just an expression of all that Jesus has done for us. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Loving Father, we thank you for your servant Moses who led your people through the waters of the Red Sea to freedom in the promised land. We thank you for your son Jesus, who's passed through the deep waters of death and opened for all the way of salvation. Now send your Holy Spirit that those who are washed in this water may die with Christ and rise with him to find true freedom as your children, alive in Christ forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you all please to stand. This may not be your faith, but this is the faith into which we are baptising Violet. So I invite you, if you feel able, to join in the responses. Together we affirm our common faith in Jesus Christ, into which Violet is to be baptised. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known to the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hello, Violet. I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. <laughs> Do not be ashamed to be ashamed of Christ crucified. You are his forever. Stand bravely with him against the powers of evil. 
and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May God, Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Amen. May God who has received you by baptism into his church pour upon you the riches of his grace that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you're now part of this lot, Violet, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. And this is a prayer for us all to say together if we are baptised people. So I invite you to join in with me. God of grace and life, in your love you have given us a place among your people. Keep us faithful to our baptism and prepare us for that glorious day when the whole creation will be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By one Spirit we are all baptised into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Give a So I will invite you to go back to your seats. Antonio is going to lead us in a time of prayer. If anybody who's making anything wants to go back to make it, they're welcome. Is it gone already? It's a lot time. We're going to start our prayers this morning with a thanksgiving and we particularly remember the G family and we want to give thanks today for Malcolm who died back in April, Violet's granddad. For the wonder of new life, we, we thank, thank you, God. God. For the blessing of family and friends and the love and care that surrounds us on every side, we, we thank, thank you, God. God. For those we love and see no longer, we thank you, God. For your light that you have set within us, we thank you, God. For the challenges that help us grow, we thank you, God. For your strength in times of weakness, we thank you, God. And for your love for each of us, we thank you, God. Amen. So our response to our prayer today is, Lord, in all our choices, help us to choose life. And we're going to be using our and us to stand for us as individuals, but also for groups of people we belong to, like residents of Belper, people who live in this country, and so on. Lord, in all our choices, help us to choose life. Lord, we pray this morning for Violet, for Nick, Sarah and Harrison as they surround her with their love, for her wider family and her godparents. Grant them all the wisdom and grace, the energy and imagination they will need to help her grow into the wonderful human being you've created her to be. Lord, in all our choices, help us to choose life. We pray for our nation, as tomorrow we will hear who is to be our next Prime Minister. Lord, we pray that they will have the courage and wisdom to recognise the brokenness of our political system, the courage and the wisdom to reach out to others to help lead our nation through the sea of troubles that surrounds us, to lead us for the common good, to lead us by building consensus, to lead us by distributing our nation's resources so everyone has enough. Lord, in all our choices, help us to choose life. And we pray for the people of Pakistan as they deal with their unprecedented flooding. Have mercy, Lord, on those who've taken refuge on narrow embankments as they watch the waters rise. Stir the hearts of nations and individuals to reach into their bank accounts to provide the necessary aid for that nation of Pakistan to rebuild. And in the longer term, Help us all to see the writing on the wall about climate change, 
It seems we're being weighed in the balance and found wanting. Have mercy upon us. Lord, in all our choices, help us to choose life. We thank God for the schools in our town and pray for the teachers, children and support staff as they return this week. We pray that our schools may be places where younger lives can flourish and older heads may impart true wisdom as well as delivering a curriculum. Lord, in all our choices, help us to choose life. And finally, in a few moments of quiet, we pray for those known to us in any sort of need. Lord, in all our choices, help us to choose life. And now we share together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I think we're going straight on to I Cannot Tell. I've just noticed that the whole song was missed out of my PowerPoint, so the band's going, what? But um, we're going to stand and sing a song which um, was chosen by the G's. They wanted to have this as part of our worship today. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship. And as we have this, our offering will be brought up as a representation of our love for God. So if I talk for long enough, I give poor Richard time to run up the stairs. Um, after we've done that, we'll have uh, our presentation. I think she's already got her bear, so we'll... It's all right, that's fine. So as soon as Richard starts to play, we'll stand. That, that's all right, that's absolutely fine. She likes her bear. So let's stand together.
seated. I want to invite Nick and Sarah and Violet and godparents and probably Harrison up onto the stage with us, just as we say our farewells. Now we always have lots of things to give you. Um, first of all is a lit candle. Oops. I'll do the others first whilst we light it. Maybe, maybe Steve can light it for us. <laughs> we always have other things. There is a little bear that we give to everybody. Their prayer bear, which arrived. It's great. We, we often get them taken in advance, and there's a, so that's fine. She can have that back. And with that is a cheeky panda's prayer book. Yeah. And a book which that you probably might want to share together. Um, what every child should know about prayer. And a book for the two of you, which is about everyday God and how we find God in the ordinary of everything that we do. And as David comes forward with our lit candle, is Harrison going to be able to... <laughs> Do you think you can hold that carefully for Violet? Give that to Mummy. And your baptism certificate and cards for godparents with a thing to stick on your fridge so that every time you open the fridge you will pray for your goddaughter. We got those there. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness, has given us a place with the saints in light. Violet, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Lord, you've shown us the way. Lead us out into the world and bless us as we try to choose the best path for our journey. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. And, oh, you've got a candle in your hand. What are we going to do? We're going to sing My Lighthouse and you've got a candle in your hand. Do you think we should give it to Mummy? because Harrison wants to help us sing this one as well. So parents and godparents, you can go back to your places, or you can stay here and sing, that's fine, but we're all going to stand up and sing another one of Harrison's favourites. Songs that fitted with the theme, I couldn't have done better today. So let's stand together.
Now, would you like to leave everybody out of church? Go back to where Trace is at the back there, and everybody's going to follow you. Do you think they will? Come on, let's go. See if we can get everybody to follow us out of church. Are you going to come as well, Violet? Pick up Mummy and Daddy on the way, I think. Shall we pick up Mummy and Daddy on the way? And then, oh, <laughs> come with me. They're coming, don't worry, don't panic. 